My question, do you get feeling sometimes that moving to India was a mistake as it is a very messy country and you would have been better living in countries like China or USA overall, money, health and opportunity wise? Hi, my name is Ivana and I've been living in Bangalore now for almost five years. It's going to be five years in January. In this video, I'm going to answer a lot of questions that you guys have about my life in India, in Bangalore, traveling India and the world and of course some personal stuff. So without further ado, let's just get into it. My question, do you get feeling sometimes that moving to India was a mistake as it is a very messy country and you would have been better living in countries like China or USA overall, money, health and opportunity wise? But first of all, in case you have missed that video, I talked about my whole journey and all the filters that I applied, why I chose India in the video mentioned down in the description below. To answer your question, do I feel sometimes that moving to India was a mistake as it's a very messy country? I never feel it was a mistake. Mistake, I do always allow myself to go back on my decision so if one day I feel that yes I could go back to the Netherlands and I would be happy with that then I would allow myself to progress that way in life but actually the messiness of India is a huge opportunity for growth I think as a human being you build up so much patience so much more tolerance so much more th certain values that we don't have in the West in India and especially because it's messy you really do get challenged to grow a lot as a human being. The comparison with the other two countries, China and USA, they're not less messy than India, I would say. Especially if you look at healthcare, if you look at politics. I'm sorry, but I would prefer India any day over those other two countries. Given an opportunity, would you participate in Big Boss or any other reality show that you like? Fun fact one, I actually know the producer, the whole Big Brother concept in the Netherlands, and hence I know what things are like behind the scenes. Fun fact two, I actually once participated in a reality show because I used to be a DJ and I entered a contest where you could win to be like the, the first female DJ in the Netherlands to be pushed by, um, by a management agency and stuff like that. I dropped off right before, you know, the, the live shows in the house and stuff like that. From those two fun facts, or like from the person that I know and from my personal experience in a reality show, hell no, never, ever. Ever. First of all, it's all fake. Everybody gets a certain stereotype for their storytelling labeled on them because it just helps the audience understand more and make judgments about a person. And the things that are not scripted are directed in certain ways to make them scripted. So I'll give you an example. One person was about to win this other reality show because that person was way, way, way more popular, but the other person would be a better spin-off for money. The producers actually directed it that way, that that person who was popular was offered a certain sum of money, a lump sum, to leave the show, and that person actually accepted it. So, um, no, 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 no. That, that is such a psychological mindfuck. I don't want to be anywhere near that, so no chance. <laughs> don't you think not living in Mumbai, you are missing out on access to media and other entertainment platforms? Well, I would rephrase it the other way. If I would be living in Mumbai, I would be missing on so much of the crazy startup culture that Bangalore has. I love that spirit of entrepreneurship, new ventures, that hipster capital of India spirit that I feel in Bangalore every single day. So no, I'm definitely not missing out on that. In terms of opportunities, I would say Mumbai is a little bit more developed in the lifestyle and fashion space when it comes down to influencers and media and those kind of things. But the space that I am in travel is in general, I feel still a very, very upcoming in India. And especially now that I'm focusing more on hospitality, it really makes more sense to be in Bengaluru, which is the hipster capital of India, because all of the new things are happening here, all of the new ventures, all of the new initiatives, and it's beyond fascinating for me to be a part of that. So no, I definitely don't feel that. Hi, how has India changed your life? Oh, in a lot of ways. I think I've become a lot more tolerant, a lot more respectful towards elders. I was always respectful towards elders but I think India ingrained that even more in me. I have become a lot more patient. 
if you don't have patience in India, you are not going to survive. India has, has changed me as a person a lot. And especially in personality wise, I've just become a lot more patient, a lot more tolerant. Um, and I love the elders. <laughs> What's the one thing in India that you can never get used to, would like to get used to? Competition culture. I mean, we do have some kind of competition culture in the Netherlands, but it is so extreme in India. I mean, the way young students are already like hyped up against each other, then young professionals in the business world, in the business world also like, it is crazy how people feel that they have to compete with each other. Whereas I've, I've personally always had that mentality of I do not enjoy winning at the expense of other people losing. I would much rather have every single person win because the more happy people we have around us, the better our lives are. And that's how I genuinely feel about my inner circle and the people who I associate with. I want you to win. I want you to do better. Sometimes you will win and I will 100% cheer for you. And when I win, I want other people to cheer for me. And if we can win at the same time, that's even better. Because if you're constantly winning by yourself and you're at the top by yourself, that's a very lonely place to be. And I don't want to be there. Especially when people come to me with certain requests or things that they want me to do. And then they start saying things like, oh, but this other person will do this. And this other person will do this. And I'm like, wrong crowd, my friend. Because if you feel that those people are better, respectfully, if you think you can find better, then go <laughs> and find better. And that has always been my mindset. I would tend to recommend you to watch uh, The Dawn Wall. It is a documentary about one of the best rock climbers in the world and how he managed to even attempt the challenge of the Dawn Wall. And the end is literally my life philosophy. I just want everybody to win because in the end that makes my life better and winning with everybody else around you is just a lot more fun than just winning by yourself and being lonely. Like, no. <laughs> Do you get any backlash from the foreign people for supporting India and standing up for them? Sometimes, but I also get backlash from India in that sense but let's just talk about the foreigners and the, the backlash from foreigners a lot of foreigners who only know India from traditional media are used to seeing the sob stories the slums the poor people trash outside it's almost like they don't want to hear about the good things because the good things are not as dramatic and will not give them as much reason to be outraged as the other stories do because if there's one thing that i've learned from the people who actually post mean comments on the internet those people are actually in general usually looking for reasons to be outraged and no matter what you would be saying they would always be looking for those reasons so it has nothing to do with me it has everything to do with them and their expectations so yes i do get backlash for that uh, because I don't highlight the bad things in India. I feel traditional media is doing that enough already. Hence why I always focus on the positives. And I also very, very much believe again, the yogi way of thinking, your vibe attracts your tribe. If you are profiling all the negative things in India, for which you get a lot more understanding when you actually live here, I feel traveling doesn't even scratch the surface of understanding, you know, poverty in India or the lack of waste management or you know the way things work with relationships like you really have to live here and build an understanding for that only then you will really get it but then still obviously there are things that i don't like but i feel there's no point in me highlighting that to conclude i always feel that any negative comment that is posted on my channel has nothing to do with me it has everything to do with the person and them looking for reasons to be outraged in which i refuse to participate the core of my content and the you know the perspective of india that i always put out will be preach what you love don't bash what you hate because that's the kind of person that i love to be in the world <laughs> what you liked in india most i could give a funny answer and say paneer but i thought like let me just like answer this in a serious way i love the diversity no day is the same every time i go out even just in the streets of bengaluru i can go to a different neighborhood and feel like I'm almost in a different Indian state or in a different country because all the neighborhoods in Bengaluru are also very, very different. Whitefield will be very different than Koramangla. Koramangla will be very different than Electronic City. I would say just the diversity, not just of one city, one state, so many states, so many languages, so many foods to try. Yeah, the diversity. It's never boring here. <laughs>
What are your plans for 2023? I don't know about you guys, but ever since 2020, I kind of stopped making plans. Obviously, I do have intentions, but making plans in this world, I feel is like kind of delusional. <laughs> it changes every few months. But to answer your question, what are my intentions for 2023? First of all, saying no to a lot of things that intuitively don't feel right for me. And I'll tell you why. In 2022, I have said a lot of yeses to things where I thought like, hmm, this might not be a smart idea. This might not be a good person to associate with. This might not be a smart project. And in the end, they always ended up being not good for me so i have to listen more to my intuition in 2023 next to that i am definitely trying to focus more on the business side of things of content creation whereas before i think definitely before the pandemic i was just a lot more frivolous traveling you know having a great time living life really like the yogi way but i feel now i have reached a point where i need structures i need systems maybe i will get a team i don't know i'm just eager to get more out of entrepreneurship. That's like an area where I feel I need to develop more. Whereas, you know, creating content and traveling the world, I've done that and I know what that's like. And I kind of have a structure and a system in that. Whereas entrepreneurship definitely needs more of my attention and my development. On the personal front, well, make sure to keep on watching until the end because I'm gonna be well, talking about the personal stuff over there. Fave three moments of 2022. Honestly, like I've mentioned before, 2022 was a little bit of a grim year for me but if i would have to mention three moments that were my favorite so in terms of personal bambi still being alive in terms of travel i would say going to a private island resort and then three business wise working with hilton when i heard that bambi is going to survive being poisoned by raisins she ate a whole plum cake which is basically like half raisins that would have been like the grimmest ending of her 2022 if she would have passed away but she didn't so i just consider that my 2022 miracle then i would say going to a private island resort which is something that i had never expected to find in india absolutely mind-blowing for me and then the third thing which is really a business kind of thing working with hilton embassy mayeta tech park it was a huge dream of mine to work with such a massive brand like Hilton and getting that trust and that confidence that I could deliver for for them in the end hearing from everybody who worked on the project like oh my gosh it was so good and it was so much fun and it was genuinely super fun doing that project that was like a huge business accomplishment and definitely one of my favorite moments <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> what's your favorite perfume Ooh. I think it depends on my mood and kind of the time of the year. If it's more spring, more light, just more fresh, I would say uh, Romance from uh, Rolf Lauren and Chance by Chanel. If it's more like a heavier, more festive mood, those kind of things. I love anything with tones of amber. Amber is my crack. And there was one perfume by Cartier. I think it got discontinued, but if anybody knows if there's still like a related perfume to that it was called le basset de dragon wow how do you pronounce that in french le basset de dragon something like that i will put the picture here it got discontinued but oh my gosh that perfume was like crack you know like how in tom and jerry like they flow towards something yeah that would be me with with that perfume from cartier but anything with like a note of amber oh one final one gucci rush crack i tell you gucci rush one well, my question is extremely basic and classic, and I know the answer, but don't know how to execute it. Like you, many of us are also passionate for different things in life. So how do you manage it and keep staying on your goal? I meant the procedural step for staying focused and at the same time, enjoying the life and process. I'm asking for somebody who is in below 30 years. By the way, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year too. I think what I have learned, because yes, I have many, many interests and passions and those kind of things. Focus on one thing and make that the whole objective for the year. Let's assume, and because that's a question that I get asked a lot, you want to start a YouTube channel. Biggest issue by starting a YouTube channel is that people feel very conscious on camera. They feel very conscious hearing their own voice. They don't know how to edit. They don't know how to shoot videos. Yada, yada, yada. The way to overcome that is to set the objective that you would just want to create one video a week which means 52 videos a year. And that is your only focus. What that does is shift your focus from all the nitty gritty details that will make you insecure to something that you can actually control 
which is creating one video every single week. Because if you start nitpicking and trying to get everything right about the camera, about the lighting, about, you know, even the styling, to be honest, of your background, then things get very, very complex. That would be my answer, singular focus. And if you want one more productivity tip, I actually have a whole video about productivity down in the description below, which I made for my personal channel, I think last year or the year before that. If you want productivity tips, then check out that video that I have on my personal channel. But otherwise, I would say one singular focus for the whole year and don't get distracted by other things. A Merry Christmas, Madam G. Thank you so much. Happy holidays to you too. Q is personal. When are you going to make your own family? Hopefully in 2023, G. The past three years have been just wild. Like I have no other word for it. They, they have been wild to build a family in that space for me. I was too insecure about that. And every single year I think that, okay, this year should bring a little bit more stability and it just hasn't until now. And I don't feel comfortable building a family if there's there's no stability. So let's hope for 2023. Can you, can you guys send prayers my way? Like just send good vibes my way for that, for 2023. <laughs> what answer in this Q and A surprised you the most? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you have heard anything in this Q and A that surprised you and you feel more people should hear or you want to introduce them to my channel, feel free to share my videos as much as possible. For now, my friends, I'm wishing you a happy new year all the best blessings for 2023. I want everybody to win. Like I seriously want everybody to win. Let's all win in 2023. And of course, if you are on board with that, make sure to put a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel and join 270,000 other subscribers. It's free and you will get a notification whenever I upload a new video. For now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.